Boom. We're live. Pizza, you're live. <laughs> <laughs> and Pizza has gone. That's producer Pizza. For the millions of you wondering who that was on screen, that handsome fella. But nonetheless, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Rugby Pass Fan Zone Live Lions Edition. Of course, it is Stevie Ferris. I was going to say that you're a special guest. You're not. You're a member of the team as we migrate through this British and Irish Lions Championship down to South Africa. We were live for the press announcement of the team and the hysteria which saw eight Scots board the plane uh, with a load of management teams as well. And exciting team. KA111 builder. Stevie, mate, all the excitement is done. The lads are now down in South Africa. Now, the lay of the land, let's get straight to it. The lay of the land down there in South Africa doesn't look good from what we're hearing. What are your thoughts on the team being down there? Are you worried for them? Are you worried for the country that it's going ahead? Do you think it's a positive thing because live sport and how much the Springboks mean to the community and, and the culture and everything that South Africa stand for? Or are you worried that it should have, might still be a few issues? Yeah, Jim. Um, firstly, I'm hugely excited about the Lions and what it's going to bring to us all over the next number of weeks. But at the same time, I'm very apprehensive of what um, lies ahead surrounding COVID-19. And, you know, everybody has their own views, opinions of what it's like for them or for others. But at the minute in South Africa, it's not bloody good. And the reason that the Lions are staying at the minute, it's uh, extremely poor. There's um, talk that the Lions might play more games down in Cape Town because there's uh, there's less um, of COVID being spread around that that area. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's going to be ever changing, Jim. Week on week, you're going to see a few things pop up in the media. We all know there's three uh, of the South African lads that tested positive for COVID-19. They had to self-isolate. The training sessions cancelled. So it's going to be ever changing as we go forward. And of course, I'm I'm, I'm a little bit worried. Um, you obviously want to see this go ahead smoothly. Everything runs like clockwork, but I don't think that's going to be the case, Jim. And um, yeah, I'm just hoping and praying that we can all enjoy this Lions tour and everybody gets something out of it. Um, but we also got to remember that there's a bigger picture behind here. And I think the Lions, and especially Connor Murray in his interview when he was made captain, I know we're going to talk about that and, and, and Connor Murray's captaincy uh, leading on from Mallow and Jones, but he talked about, you know, <laughs> They're very, very much aware of the circumstances outside their bubble. And everybody in the Lions squad is making sure that they stick to the protocols. They stick to everything that's being put in front of them. They go from hotel to training, back down to the bus, back to the hotel. There's no going out for coffees, going out socialising. Um, we know there's a four-week lockdown in the region that they're in at the minute. There's no alcohol, nothing. So, like, they're abiding by all the rules, and um, that's the way it's got to be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've got a few messages coming in about the team, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I just want to get a bit of insight, Stevie, from you, um, because you are the only one on this call that has been on a British and Irish Lions tour. So, with the, the big build-up that we've had, and obviously the team selection, we were live on here, and we had huge engagement from the Rugby Pass millions and the masses. Um, what is it like now when it comes down to business? Obviously, we saw the game against Japan at the weekend. The headlines out of that is that we lost Alan Wynne jones as captain. Obviously, Justin Tipperick is, is now not on the tour. What's it like as a player in terms of wanting to pull on that shirt as soon as possible to cement a place in the team or, you know, to put yourself in the shot window? Because I think that's the build-up now, isn't it, for, you know, this team that Warren Gatlin's picked, the team that played against Japan. People are wondering why Alan Wynne jones played. Well, he hadn't played for a long time. Do you know what I mean? So how, once all the romance and all the hysteria and the dust has settled and you're actually in camp, how quickly do you want to be playing? I, I think um, if you've been on three tours and you've nine test caps and you're like Alan Wynne jones and, 
what is it, 148 caps for, for his country, nine caps for the Lions. You know, he's just a, an absolute hero, legend. I know you've written him off uh, more than a dozen times, Jim, over the last decade, but uh, the big lad has kept trucking. But he's injured, and, you know, that's disappointing. But, you know, some of the lads will be itching to pull on that red jersey and you know at the weekend. Even look at Hamish Watson, who missed out on the opportunity. He's getting another opportunity that granted this weekend. But, um, you know, for me, as soon as I was named as playing for the British and Irish Lions, I could not wait to get that red jersey on and represent everything that the Lions stands for, everything that the, that the Lions represents. Um, for the lads that have worn the jersey before, I know we've chatted about this at length, but it, it is a special, special place. Unfortunately for you, Jim, you have never been a part of that, but you can sort of relate to it uh, when you've played for Scotland and played for big teams and won trophies. Uh, and definitely for me, that was the pinnacle of my career. So absolutely for me, get that jersey on your back as soon as possible. For others that have been there, done it, got the, the T-shirt, um, excuse the pun, you know, they, they might be happy enough to, to sit out a week or two and get to South Africa before actually making that, uh, making that step onto the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the headline and maybe not the, the headline, which is obviously Conor Murray. We can chat about that after we've spoken about the team selection. Anything stand out in that? I think the one that stands out for me is Stuart Hogg being captain ahead of Owen Farrell, who's picked at 12. Um, so when you look at that team, maybe let's just chat a little bit about that because maybe that does piggyback uh, the leadership and, and the worry, I suppose, with Alan Wynne-Jones and, you know, uh, Conor Murray being picked as captain. And, you know, was it a kind of snapshot decision. You know, when you look through that team, Stevie, I know it's obviously the first team against the Lions. Um, the set, obviously the same namesake in the first game for a lot of these guys. But Stuart Hogg being captain ahead of someone like Owen Farrell, um, is it just for fans to concentrate on his game, do you think? What do you think um, Warren Gatlin's thinking is around that? Yeah, good question, Jim. Like, like myself, I'm sure you've watched Exeter over the last, you know, six weeks. And Stuart Hogg hasn't been starting for Exeter. Um, question mark whether or not he'll actually start for the Lions. And then when you're given the captain's armband, there comes a responsibility, uh, a lot of responsibility as well. And I think it's maybe Warren Gatlin saying, look, I have confidence in you. Um, maybe at Exeter, you've lost a little bit of form, but it's not over the last couple of months. It's over the last year, 18 months that I've watched you play. And Warren Gatlin's instilled that into him. Um, we all know Hoggy he can... Uh, he's his own man. He's a bit of a joker at times. He likes to have a beer, likes to party, but when it comes to the crunch, he usually performs. Um, his performances, for me, for Scotland, he, he's been a little bit hit or miss. Yes, of course, he's a match winner, but he is you know, does have a few mistakes in him as well, but I'd rather somebody like you know try something instead of getting into their shell, and, and Hoggy will certainly try something. Um, yeah, like he's got bags of experience as well at international level. There's four other Scottish guys, Jim. You'll be absolutely delighted. There's five Scottish men in the starting 15, won't you? I absolutely will. And that man, Finn Russell, um, not just me. There's a, there's a few people on here as well that are excited to see Finn Russell play. Obviously, Ali Price came off the bench at the weekend uh, for Conor Murray. I thought he was brilliant. Uh, but Finn Russell, uh, Cal 11 builder, hello again. He's expecting to see Jouet from Finn Russell. And I suppose that there's this talk around the start in 10, right? Because for me, I thought Dan Bigger was sensational at the weekend. I know it's one game against Japan, but you look at the lead up to that. Owen Farrell looks like he's going to be a 12. You know, that's kind of what Warren Gatland is used to be playing him in that position anyway, uh, which opens up the opportunity for someone like Finn Russell to the man in situ, Dan Bigger. I think we can all agree that he's potentially the man with the jersey at the minute. Finn Russell, what would you like to see? It was interesting. I was with Shane Williams at the weekend. And we were talking about how well Dan Bigger was playing and how his games evolved, his leadership, and he's really stepped up this last season. But with Shane Williams, it was almost like he was thinking, Finn, maybe that's him with his playing hat on in terms of getting the ball into the wider channels, you know, these kind of kick passes that he does, uh, and maybe just throwing something different at South Africa. I mean, how excited are you to see Finn? Do you rate him as highly as us Scots do? Uh, do you think he's, he's got an opportunity to start a test match if Bigger's fit? Uh, Jim, yeah, like I rate him very highly. He, he seems like a, a really good lad as well. I know you boys speak very highly of him um, off the pitch as well as on it. And 
Uh, yeah, he brings something different for sure. Watching him play with Racing 92 over the last couple of seasons, he loves to zip it around. He loves to play a bit as UEA. Um, he does bring something different. I know Ian McGeegan is a, is a big fan of him as well, and he does bring something different to the table. Do you need that um, against the South Africans? I think you probably do. I think you need another option there. You know, if, if something's not working as the tour goes on, you've got to change it up. And he is certainly a man that can change it up. And I like the combination with Ali Price and, and, and him uh, playing 9 and 10 this weekend. Just the combinations, get them going early, see how they're going to play together. Um, the two lads know each other very well, I'm sure, from Scotland. So, yeah, I'm excited to see how Finn Russell goes. He's, uh, he, he's the type of player that Jim, we could be t- talking about him in six weeks' time, saying he was the guy that won uh, the Lions Tour uh, for the British Nice Lions. He's got so much... Uh, potential and quality uh, and of course his skills are just unbelievable or we could be talking about him and saying geez Finn Russell was disappointing made too many mistakes look at yellow card started This, Stevie, one of us dropped off there, mate. Um, you still got me? I've still yeah, got I got you, mate. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, this is the part of doing it on um, virtually. Stevie, well, Jim, um, you're, you're in your garage, yeah, like the, the Wi-Fi no. signal isn't great out there. No, the, stu- the, the studio slash garage. Let's talk about some of the other headlines in there. So there's a few comments coming in around Lewis Reece Summit playing on the wing. Um, how excited to see him play! I thought both wingers at the weekend, Josh Adams and. Obviously, Duan van der Merwe, I, I thought, looked very, very good, looked very comfortable, offers something different. But, you know, this man, Lewis Rees Zammert, carved up for Wales. Do you not think it's really weird that he has not played in front of a crowd internationally? And he's off to South Africa. It's going to be the same thing for him. And then, um, yeah, off the back of that, you know, can he, can he go up to this next level again? I mean, the game against the Lions at the weekend is probably not at the level it was, you know, in the Six Nations. But wear a different jersey, carry him, build a lion round with him. And, you know, there's a lot of eyes on him because, you know, when you speak to people, Stevie, these kind of tours and, yes, he's made a big name for himself. He's big on social media now. People are talking about him. Look, he looks like he's about 14, 15 there. But if he can step up like George North did in that tour uh, 2013 to Australia, uh, he could become a global superstar if he, he can carve up in South Africa. Oh, man, I think he already is a global superstar, like in, in, in rugby terms anyway. Uh, the way he plays, the pace that he has. I know he was playing for Gloucester and everybody was talking about this guy that could run the 100 metres in 10 and a half seconds and he was burning everybody. And, you know, who would win a race, him or Johnny May and, and all this carry on. And then, like, you know, when you when people start hyping you up, you got to deliver. And he, what? He delivered on the biggest stage in the Six Nations. Just a, an incredible player. The chip over the top, the regather, the, the tries. I know we've seen that quite a bit with Jacob Stockdale playing for Ireland, the, the similar kind of football and ability. But he certainly has a lot more pace. And I'm super excited to see how he goes. And Jim, like, you might disagree with me here, but looking at the team sheet um, at the weekend, when it comes to the backs, it's a bit more specifically, I see a lot of those guys not starting the first test. Um, you know, Chris Harris, Reece Ahmed, um, with Josh Adams, Finn Russell, Ali Price. I'm just not sure that they're going to be starting the first test. Um, so this is a huge opportunity. I know it's only the first game in South Africa, but if a couple of these lads play really, really well, then uh, you know they'll they'll give uh, Warren Gatland a few a few headaches and, and throw a few question marks over team selection going forward. So yeah, he just needs to get the ha- the ball in his hands. I think Duan van der Merwe against Japan, he looks very beatable in the inside. He looks very very slow to to, to turn and go on the inside. He got caught a couple of times. When you've got Ches- Cheslin Colby running down your channel, we all know what he what he can do. Um, and I've, Again, not the reference Ulster too much, but like he he made a, a full out of Jacob Stockdale a couple of times in the in the quarter final away at Toulouse um, in the European Cup. So, like he is an absolute superstar and uh, has has pace to burn as well. Maybe not the high end pace that uh, Lou Reece Salmon has, but you know his uh, stepping abilities to second and on. So um, yeah, it, it it is the first game, but but I think this game 
means an awful lot to some of these players for their team select for the team selection going forward, Jim. Right. Let's just talk about a couple of others we could pick everyone out and obviously chat about them, which we're not going to do because uh, we've got a bit to get through and there's obviously some headline stuff. Tolupe Falatau at eight. Now, I'm interested to get your opinion on his form. Um, I can give you some opinion on his form into the lead-up to the Lions. I thought he, he, he has found form. Uh, at the weekend, I didn't think he was that great. I thought Jack Conan was brilliant. Do you think that number eight slot is still open with Falatau at eight? You've got, obviously, Sam Simmons. Everyone's excited about him, but he's not playing international rugby, so the excitement has lied around him playing in the Prem and carving up. But do you think that number eight slot's open, or do you think Falatau is the man that still has that jersey and it's him to lose it? I think it's Falatau to lose the jersey, definitely, but I, I agree with you, Jim. I didn't think he was great uh, at the weekend against Japan. It looked a little bit sluggish, a bit off it. Um, Courtney Laws was exceptional when he came on for Alwyn Jones. He's starting at six this, this week. 18 tackles he made um, when he came on. Um, I think against the against South Africa, you're going to have to have a big six in there uh, and, and a big eight. Um, or, you know, if, if, if you're going to play Hamish Watson as it is this weekend, I like the way they went with, with two bigger lads alongside him. I don't know, we all know Hamish Watson can punch above his weight, but I, I just think with the sheer physical size and power of the South Africans that you need it there. You maybe don't need it against the, the Emirates Lions uh, this weekend. I've watched them in great detail over the last couple of months in the Rainbow Cup and they've been extremely poor. Like, um, you know, Andy Warner and, and Jordan Hendricks said, uh, Pretty good at controlling the team, and Maxwani has pace to burn. But apart from that, really disappointing, really poor. Their mall defence, very poor. Somebody like Jamie George on the back of a mall this weekend could get two or three tries easily. I'm expecting the Lions to put this Emirates Lions team to the sword, 50, 60 points. Um, and for this back row to, to really come on well. But I, I certainly agree with you, Jim. I think Falatai, this is a big game for him. He needs to gel well with the two lads alongside him. I think he just needs to do his own thing. Like that, uh, the try he scored against the All Blacks in the corner. You know, he, he is very good at staying in the wider channels uh, and being a threat out there. So he just doesn't need to be the guy that trucks it up the middle and a bit like a CJ Stanry. He doesn't need to be that guy. Just go out and, and play his own game like we, you and I have both witnessed over the last six months because he has been coming back into form. So yep, it's a big game for Falatai. It's good to see him as Watson back after taking a bit of a bang to the head in training. And Courtney Laws, I think, uh, is a, an outside chance to start at six in the test, uh, the test team, just because of of uh, of that. The harsh reality is, you need a, a guy that's going to go around smacking people uh, and you know putting his body on the line and bringing that physicality and those game changing moments, Jim, that really lift the team. I think Courtney Laws can bring that. Yeah, interesting. Because Ty burn all the narratives around him after the weekend. Anyway, let's move on to the headline. Um, talking point of last week and obviously going forward into this week and obviously for the rest of the tour it's around the captaincy question yeah. marks over Connor Murray being in the leader, leadership group there's some stuff being going around on social um, obviously around the, 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 the training and the interaction that Connor Murray's had with his fellow players we'll just play this VT and then we can chat about it and just finally have, the, have the, your teammates treated you any differently since you got the news <laughs> yeah unfortunately just they don't call me by my name anymore. It skips for the moment, so I'm trying to get that, get rid of that one. Um, but no, they've been brilliant. Um, that's another thing that put me at ease. Uh, obviously, on Saturday night with with Al uh, and and uh, Tips losing out through injury. Um, you know, once Warren said that I'd that be taking over as captain, everyone came up and, and said congrats. And you know, you could feel that they meant it. Um, so it's great to have that kind of support of your your fellow players, I think that's probably the most important thing is, you know, they're supporting you and, and you know, everyone is is digging in now. It's getting serious. So everyone's working really hard. And, um, you know, again, I go back to saying it's, there's a really good vibe in camp. Interesting, Stevie, isn't it? The fact that he was surprised that he was picked as captain. None of us, I've not seen it anywhere from any credible journal, journal any, any fans. No one had Conor Murray down as a captain, even contender in the lead-up. It was all around Alan Wynne jones Maru Otoji, Owen Farrell. You know, Ken Owen's name's been thrown around in there. Jerry George's name was thrown around. Now, I don't know how many games you've played with Conor Murray. He's obviously got the experience, but it seems to be that it's kind of like, who else is there? Like, who, who else can captain this team? Let's go with the most experienced guy. 
Again, it doesn't matter what I think. I didn't even have Conor Murray down as a, as a, as a certain starter. What are your views on it? I mean, have you played with Conor Murray? Has he got this, the leadership credentials that can potentially do something on this tour? Scrum half as well. I don't know any nines that have been captain before. Yeah. Like, for me, Jim, it was completely left field. I, I did not see it coming whatsoever. I went um, on the 2011 Rugby World Cup with Conor Murray with Ireland. Probably played maybe 10, 15 test matches with him uh, with Ireland. Obviously, Owen Redden was ahead of him for a good bit of that. But, yeah, he didn't strike me as a captain, like, back then. But, like, Jim, like, that's 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 a decade ago. Like, you know, the guy has so much more experience now. This is his third tour. Um, and, obviously, Warren Gatland uh, has seen something in him that uh, he, he really thinks will, will help the Lions going forward. And the question that I'd like to throw to you in this, Jim, and I don't know what your thoughts are. Everybody, you know, when talking about Alaman Jones as the captain, was like, well, Alaman Jones isn't assured of his starting place. You know, you've Mara Toji there, Ian Henderson, Courtney Laws, you know, Johnny Hill all playing brilliant rugby. He's not assured to start. And now everybody's going, well, Conor Murray's been given the captaincy because he's the only one that's kneeled down a spot on the test team. So I'm like going, well, hold on a second. The Lions captain was picked in, in Alaman Jones and he wasn't. He was coming out in the media and saying, look, my position isn't kneeled down, blah, blah, blah. We're now the media are almost going, well, Conor Murray's been selected as captain because he's the only one that's kneeled down his position. So it's a bit contradictory about you know, what way to go about a captaincy. So like for, for me, that makes it even more left field. Um, that uh, seemed to be going about it two different ways. Look, I'm not the I'm not the, the manager or head coach of the British and Irish Lions. That's Warren Gatlin's job. If he thinks Conor Murray's the right man, then you know all the lads have got to get behind him. I think the most important thing, Jim, is that he's got the respect of the players. Um, going through interviews and everything else, he, he's got massive respect. Jimmy George talking about that he's going to be an amazing captain. Reading through some stuff. If you rewind the clock back, going through interviews, um, I find a, a brilliant um, interview from from Andrew Conway pre. 2026 Nations when Conor Murray was, uh, his head was being called for by a lot of the Irish media about not being selected for Ireland and the, the drum was being um, hammered by everybody, you, Andy Good, a lot of other guys about John Cooney being uh, playing for uh, for Ireland. And he, you know, Andrew Conway said it was all clickbait, you know, I thought it was very, very interesting. Everybody was getting on his back and then he started to play well and then when he starts to play well, everybody's saying how good he is and, you know, he's the best nine that Ireland have. And then he has a relatively good game for the Lions. And now he's a, a test, definite test starter. And boom, before you know it, he's captain of the British and Irish Lions. And, like, it was only back in 2020, everybody was saying that, you know, Conor Murray shouldn't be playing for Ireland. And he was way down the peck in order to find uh, behind all the rest of the nine. So just your opinion, Jim, on how left field is it and... Do you think that there's something in it of him probably being one of the only test starters, or do you think his position isn't nailed down? Again, it's easy to judge, isn't it? I didn't think he played that well at the weekend against Japan. Um, he got charged down as well, which is unlike him. You know, has he felt under pressure to be captain? I think the thing is for me, Stevie, and any great teams that we've played in, is there's always that kind of person up in front isn't there. You know, you look at the best teams, you look at the All Blacks with Richard McCaw, you look at, obviously, England team winning in, in 2003, Martin Johnson, and then you think of some of the other great leaders, Paul O'Connell, um, O'Driscoll. Um, these names that stick out where you're like, I will follow you. You are the man that I will follow, regardless of what, I, and there's no question marks over that guy's captain. Makes complete sense. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. this is the first tour we've gone into. I mean, I was on a tour, a tour. I went to the World Cup in 2011 and they picked Al Kellock as captain. I know this obviously isn't the Lions, it's slightly below. We went to the World Cup in 2011 and the coach said to me, yeah, we've picked Al Kellock as captain, but that doesn't mean that he's going to be starting. And I found that. But I was like, mate, we're going to a World Cup. With the, yeah. So you're telling me we're the only team in world rugby probably going to a World Cup and you, you're saying to me that our captain might not be starting. And he was right. I played against Argentina in a must-win game um, and he didn't play. And I just found it bizarre that, you know, for me, your captain needs to be a shoe in He needs to be above the pack, right, in terms of having an input on the team, having an input on the environment, 
having an input on the way that you play. Um, and that's the only worry for me. And it might be a stroke of genius. Do you know what I mean? It might be like unbelievable. It lets guys like you know Maratoji, whose name was thrown about, off the back of no real leadership credentials. It might just allow players like Maro just to do his thing. You know, I actually think Maro would have stepped up to the plate as captain and arguably his discipline would have been better. But again, obviously it's a talking point going in to the tour is that Alan Wynne-Jones, I think he would have started the first test match. It's really unfortunate for him. It gives, you know, we saw Alex Corbusiero get called up in 2013 and look what he did when he got called up and all these last minute changes that happened. We've seen it happen, like narratives built on the side of, of, of people's injuries. So I think we wish Alan Wynne Jones well. I'm not going to write him off, Stevie, for four years' time or even getting back for the second <laughs> or third test because I can't eat my words off the back of that. But um, let's just talk about the replacement for Alan Wynne Jones because, again, a lot of talking points here of Adam Beard being picked ahead of someone like James Ryan. I know that there's talk of James Ryan being injured. I don't know if you've heard anything around that. Johnny Gray, I imagine, will be pretty gutted playing a final, watching that unfold, potentially thinking, um, you know, after this final, now Alan Wynne Jones is injured. Surely I'm next up. Adam Beard. Now, I can give a bit of insight into this, but is there anything that you're hearing about James Ryan? Um, is he injured? Is he, is he not fit to go? Or is this the next one off the rank? Is it, is it Adam Beard? I know Warren Gatlin thinks of him highly. Yeah, Jim. Professional rugby, it's absolutely bonkers, isn't it? Like 2018, Grand Slam winner with uh, with Ireland, you know, hammered the English in their own backyard. James Ryan, Mara Toji, that's going to be the, the 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 Lions' second row combination. These two guys are absolute beasts. And then you lose a little bit of form, and James Ryan over the last what six months, he went off with an HIA against Wales. He only played three out of the five Six Nations games, trying to find a bit of form. La Rochelle, Lencer got stuffed in that game. He didn't play particularly well. Ulster, they only beat Ulster by two points. Lencer only beat Ulster by two points. He wasn't particularly good. Then they were beaten by Glasgow um, in the Rainbow Cup as well. He played 80 minutes in that game, didn't play particularly well. And then there was a, his last game was the, the Dragons, which, you know, the Dragons is the Dragons and a, and a, a dead rubber. So I just think he's – it's just the timing. It's all about timing and it's all about finding a, a rich vein of form. And Adam Beard started four out of the five Six Nations games. He's a he's a, a very resilient guy, um, a good line-out operator. And, yeah, he's a, he seemed to have got the nod. I'm not sure if James Ryan was 100% fit. Would he get uh, the nod ahead of him? But um, I think Warren Gatlin, even if James Ryan was 100% fit, would have went with Adam Beard. So I don't know what your thoughts are on it. The, the, the rumours coming out of Ireland, Jim, are that James Ryan was did have a bit of a niggle. But like I'm covering the Ireland versus Japan game this weekend, and it wouldn't surprise me if James Ryan starts and captains Ireland this weekend in that game, which would probably send the Irish uh, fans and media in their frenzy. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next couple of days. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Uh, Nick, Nick Rose mentioned that James Ryan is injured, question mark. I think you've just answered that question there. I mean, I'm thinking who's next off the rank. I mean, obviously, there's a bias around Johnny Gray. I understand why Johnny Gray wasn't picked. Um, and Nick Rose just posted something around James Ryan being injured. Uh, look, we'll see. Um, but yeah, Johnny Gray naturally would have picked him. I'm thinking... Who else? Jake Ball. I know he's gone back to Australia now, but he would arguably, in my opinion, is the kind of player that would rock up against South Africa. But actually, when I dig a bit deeper into Adam Beard and I look at the way that he plays, he's mauling. Um, obviously, he's scrummaging around the tight. He's very effective around the tackle. And Warren Gatlin is a big fan of his. Uh, I think there was a tour, was it a couple of years ago, where he picked Adam Beard when he wasn't fit and gave him every opportunity to get fit to play on tour. Um, and it's just one of them things, Steve. We've all been in teams, haven't we, where the coaches, they just like you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For whatever reason, they like your character. They like the way you are off the pitch. They love the way that you play. And fair play to Adam Beard. Um, I wish him all the best. Uh, he's going in a group of locks. I know Johnny Hill's playing at the weekend. I personally don't think Johnny Hill's been at the level in which um, has warranted his place in the British and Irish Lions Tour definitely as a starter. So, yeah, we wish Adam Beard all the very best in that. Um, as we see, Johnny 
Hill there on the charge down. What a game that was in the Prem final. Uh, I want to talk a little bit then around um, South Africa and what we're going to expect from them. But firstly, we spoke to Cheslin Colby on the offload and asked him if there was any British and Irish Lions players. I know it's a little bit kind of what if, could have, would have, should have. But if there was a player that he would pick uh, to bring across to the spring box, who would it be? And this is what he said. Lions players to play for the box. Who would you choose and why? <laughs> Kristen, you can't ask him that a week before the tour. That's um, brutal. Isn't it? His teammates will be on his back. Whoever he replaces in the box team, we're going to go absolutely nuts with him. You can... <laughs> well, you can add them. You can add them into the extended squad then. Who would you like as an ally, ally on your on your squad? Wow. I might, I might get a few 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 moments with the boys and if I join up in camp. <laughs> um, I think... Me, me, I will, me, I will, I could think about this. I think Mary would definitely be a, a good player to have. Um, just the, the way he plays the game. Although you have great players like uh, It's a Beth, uh, or just name on them, uh, I think they can definitely play well together too. And then Liam, Liam Williams as well. Welshman. Just, nice. uh, just a bit of the X factor that the he can bring towards the team. Uh, definitely, look, he could be part of uh, of the spring box as well. <laughs> Interesting. Fair play to Christina on the offload for asking the question. Um, and as Cheslin Colby's obviously, I don't know whether he's in South Africa off the back of uh, Toulouse winning the top fourteen. Did you see his drop goal from the halfway line? No, didn't see it. Mate, he, Cheslin Colby is the best player in the world. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, so he was put on the spot there and he's gone for Mario, Mario Otoji and <laughs> Liam Williams. Uh, do you think the South African team would want any of the British and Irish Lions players or do you think he's just thrown a couple of players that he knows? I mean, Liam Williams, let's not beat around the bush, mate. He's a phenomenal player, isn't he? And he, he steps up and I think Mario Otoji, I don't know, Etzebeth, Snyman, Mostar, uh, Lou Diega. I don't know. I think they're all up there with Marrow. But um, what do you think? Do you think it was harsh for him to have to answer that? Do you think he, he is thinking that? Or do you think he's happy with the squad that he's got? Albeit they've not played, have they? Yeah, well, I was expecting him to say Jim Hamilton. <laughs> he did say that. We had to edit it out because it was a, this is a Lions feature. Oh, so. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, like I think he did take his time to have a think about it there. Um, and for him to sit and have a think about it for what five six seconds, it shows that he's never even thought about it before. So I think they're completely happy with the team that they've got. And if he was offered any of the British and Irish lands, he probably wouldn't take them. But in his own opinion, he probably thinks that Mario Toji and Liam Williams are two of the best players that he thinks play for the British and Irish lands. Uh, and I tend to agree with him. Um, it's it's hard not to. Liam Williams. Wow, what a tour he had in 2017. We were out there, Jim, in New Zealand. He was unbelievable. Uh, and that's why I think, you know, he's he could be in with a shout and starting a 15 ahead of Hoggy. But we'll, we'll see how that transpires over the next uh, the next few weeks. But not for a play with Tesla in France or not. I suppose from my point of view, I wouldn't mind a couple of South African players. I don't know what you think coming over to the British and Irish Lions. Um, you know, maybe somebody like Fafta Clark. Uh, some of the Irish fans might not be happy after naming Conor Murray for the for the Lions uh, captaincy. Uh, your old pal Etzebeth, your sparring partner, that um, he got the better view that time. And of course, I would have Jeslin Colby starting for me. And I totally agree with you, Tim. He is world's best player at the minute. Um, just electric. Every time he touches the ball, he makes something happen. He scores tries. And bloody hell, he's physical. He is so physical in the tackle also. Like he, he absolutely hammers his opposition wings at any opportunity he gets. So, yeah, at Beth, Faf de Clerk and Colby, if I was the, the two, two or three lads to come over and, and help out the Lions, I don't know what you think, Tim. Well, Colby, definitely. He's one of them players, you know, when anyone says, oh, who's the hardest player that you've ever played against? For me, it was the lads that would make you look like an idiot that would embarrass you. It's just like Shane Williams, like Dan Carter, I touched him once, but he skinned me. It was off on the big screen. <laughs> but Cheslin Colby runs close to the breakdown, right? And he sits people down. Wait, so <laughs> the big fellas around guard, you know, close to the breakdown for the people who don't know what it means uh, when you're guard. But the kind of first and second guys around the breakdown, Colby runs these shoulder balls and he's sitting people down 
He'll either sit you down, he'll step you, he'll chip and chase. Like He'd definitely be one. Uh, Etzebeth has been carving up for too long. Not many players go to France and carve up. You know, he's been playing at six as well. Uh, Peter Steph de Toy, obviously World Player of the Year. I know he's had his injury problems. It'd be good to see how he comes back. Um, yeah, Faf de Klerk as well. I like Faf de Klerk. I don't love him. I think there's a lot of kind of hype around him. He's obviously a world-class player. I said I don't love him. Like, I do love him, but I, will, I don't love him enough to bring him across. But, Stevie, when you look at this, right, and if you go back to 97, let's go back even before two, uh, 2009, the physicality, right, of these warm-up games, they were nasty, right? They were dirty. Yeah. You know, you remember Doddy Weir getting injured, uh, wrecking his career off the back of getting stamped and hyperextended his knee. You know, the punching, whatever else was going on in there. What do you reckon we'll see from this Emirates Lions team? It's at altitude. Obviously, the bonding and the fact that the Prem final lads are coming into the squad late. You know, uh, they've not been together that long. The South African team haven't played that much. What do you expect from this Lions team at, at altitude? Is it going to be like we've seen before? They're just going to try and get stuck into the the British and Irish Lions, or are they just going to go through the phases? How do you see it unfolding, having watched the Lions play and kind of knowing what it's like going down to South Africa as well? Yeah, Jim, I played against the the Lions in 2009, uh, come off the bench for half an hour, and it was handy enough because we were already winning by 50 or 60 points at, at, at that stage. And like, I do expect something similar. Um, I, I really do. Um, like, the way the... the Emirates Lions have been defending. They're all over the place. Their systems don't look in a good uh, in a good place either. The Maldi, as I uh, referenced earlier on, is it, shockingly bad. Um, and I just think the Lions will overpower them. Um, I think they're 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 more physical. Um, they're they're going to have lads who you know, this is their first opportunity to represent the Lions, and they're going to go out there and absolutely kill it. And and I think that you know this is going to be. If you're a Lions fan, and you know me, you played at a high level, you would expect the, the British Nice Lions to go out here and put on 40 points, 50 points. And if they don't, if it, if it's like a you know a 33 20 or 33 15, I don't think that's going to be good enough. I think there's got you know the media will start to get on the backs of some of the lads back of Warren Gatland. Who knows? He might bring the Klein nose back out again this year. But uh, yeah. I, I'm expecting a, a big resounding win for the British Irish Lions against the Emirates Lions. Yes, altitude is a bloody killer. Remember, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, go on, tell, tell yeah. us a bit about altitude because the lads have obviously been training with these masks on, which is obviously uh, trying to prepare them. But can anything prepare you for playing at altitude or is it going to be a complete shock to these lads? I suppose they're going to be happy, no disrespect to the Emirates Lions, that they get a run out against a lesser team and they can try and get used to that. But what's it like playing at altitude? I can tell you. It ain't great. Yeah, no, it's it's tough, Jim. It's tough. I like uh, my preparation getting into that tour in '09 was on the mask with the, the, the kind of big. Um, the lions actually send it over. It's like it's almost like a generator uh, with a hose coming out of it, and you attach it on, turn it on, and you can you can raise the altitude. I also, use altitude chamber up at Jordanstown University. I know there's a few of those chambers floating around different parts of the UK. Um, maybe they were able to use that. Um, but yeah, when your lungs get burning at altitude, like I played in Johannesburg, played in Bloemfontein uh, against the Cheetahs, it was so tough. And um, if anybody's watching this and they go back, Google Stevie Ferris try versus the Lions in 09, and I get the ball and I run like 60 yards and, and absolutely burn everybody. Um, <laughs> well, that's just a complete spoof. And I score the try, and I, 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 I score the try, 80 minutes is up, and I try to get up. And like I couldn't get up, and I just fell over again, and just lay there. And Rob Carney came over to me, and was like, "You all right, big man?" I was like, <gasps> "I can't breathe, I can't breathe." I was just so wrecked, um, so busted. I was only on for half an hour, and then I had to back it up three days later, or four days, whatever way it worked out, against the Cheetahs and Bloemfontein started that game. Um, so yeah, you need to adapt quickly, Jim. You know yourself. It takes a few weeks of getting used to, and uh, you know even like outside of the rugby environment. Um, you know, obviously, I climb Kilimanjaro. You've climbed Mount Kenya. Um, you know, at, at a much higher altitude, it can affect the body in different ways, and everybody reacts differently. So, uh, you know, some lads might really suffer, uh, and other guys might be not too bad with it. So, 
hopefully everybody has been in the hard yards and the training and used the, all the altitude uh, chambers and uh, devices that have been given to them over the last six weeks and they're ready to go. But, you know, from your experience, Jim, it can be tough, can't it? No, it can, yeah. And that's, I suppose, that is the worry. Playing altitude isn't good. I mean, it's different for these lads now. They're trained the staff in the background and obviously everyone wants an opportunity to go down there and uh, prove a point and, and make a claim for the, the test spot. Stevie, we're going to wrap it up, mate. Absolute pleasure. We, we could have talked ruggers all day. Look at your arms. What, I texted you yesterday, didn't I? Biceps or triceps? What, what should be stronger? What did you say? Um, my, like, I've got this like horrendous golfer's tan at the minute. Can you see it there? Oh, I don't want to see the doubts either. I didn't ask you about the doubts. I asked you about the biceps and triceps. But it's good to see you're back in the gym. Jim, uh, I know you were struggling with a bad back there for a while, but you're up and running. Um, and we'll have to get a couple of sessions in over this tour and uh, see how we get on. But thanks for having me on, Jim. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll, we'll be back on Monday for the next team announcement around 20 past 10. So tell your friends, uh, tell your family, tell the animals. You can all join us on here, be interactive, <laughs> and, and we'll read out some of your comments. Obviously, the offload is running across all our platforms as well. Uh, we obviously had Cheslin Colby, so if you've not seen that, try and get onto that. But subscribe to the Rugby Pass YouTube. There'll be loads going on over, uh, well, always, but obviously in the build-up to the test matches and then throughout. We've got our live show, Stevie, as well, at London Welsh, um, Harpenter Rugby Club and Farnham, which me, yourself, Adam Jones and Andy Goode will be at and we'll be live streaming them as well. So there's a lot going on, ladies and gentlemen. But from me, Jim Hamilton, I didn't even intro myself at the beginning, but the masses should know who I am. And yourself, Stevie Ferris, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the game on Saturday, five o'clock kickoff, UK and Ireland time. And we'll see you on Monday. And there'll be a load of interaction to chat about there, I'm sure.